Did you know your heart pumps 8,000 liters of blood around your body every day? You can see more than 7 million colors. You have between 100,000 and 150,000 hairs on your head. Your skin has thousands of different sensors that send information to the brain. Your brain stores the equivalent of 20,000 dictionaries and there are so many other things in your body that can't even be measured in numbers. Now ask yourself, isn't that the definition of a miracle? How probable are you to exist? Dr. Bisner puts it like this. Imagine there was one life vest somewhere thrown into the ocean and there is one turtle swimming in all of these oceans somewhere underwater. The probability that you came about and exist today is about the same as that turtle sticking his head out of the water in the middle of the life vest on one single try. Let that sink in because today's video is about you. How probable is it that you exist on this day? The likelihood is so improbable that that is the definition of a miracle. It basically, there's no statistical evidence that you should exist today. We will look at miracles today and see how the Bible defines a miracle and what that means for you, how you can put this into practice. I'll share three different strategies how you can live this life and live this life as a miracle person. Well, let's look at the numbers. Most people would say, why should we believe in miracles? After all, there is science and science can explain everything. Well, I say they are wrong. I believe God is the higher power. He utilizes science to help us understand things, but that doesn't deny his existence as the higher power. God wants us to love and show kindness and show others the kindness he's already showed us. God wants us to live a miracle life and wants us to share that with everyone. He also wants us to live forever and that's why in the Bible he explains his plan for humanity. But what is a miracle according to the definition of Oxford? Oxford states it's an extraordinary and welcome event that is not explicable by natural or scientific laws and is therefore attributed to a divine agency. In other words, it's an event that is so unlikely it's statistically not proven, impossible. If we look around us, there are numerous scientists that have gone so deep, for example, into molecular biology that they just say there's no chance there isn't a God. There must be a God. It's, it blows them away and that's quite amazing. Everything God made from the sea creatures that are undiscovered until today, all the way to the leaf that's on the tree, maybe in your neighbor's garden. Everything God has made and it's perfect. He also made us and he made us in a perfect way and he has given us a hope that we can share with others and live this life to the fullest capacity. In Jeremiah 32 verse 27 it says, I am Yahweh, the God of mankind. Is anything too hard for me? Nothing's too hard for God. And even Jesus repeats this when he says in Luke 18, 27, what is impossible with man is possible with God. So now we know the God of the Bible. He has a plan for us and he has a plan for us to fill the earth, believe and get baptized, tell others of the good news and live eternally in the kingdom. But now the question is, how do we do this? Well, the first tip I want to give you is get to know your creator. God is the single source of truth. He is the creator of the entire universe, everything around you. You can walk with Jesus, the best man who has ever lived and who has entered this planet and can emphasize with your feelings, with your struggles, with what is important to you. With God and his son Jesus, 
we have a perfect recipe for success, a life that will never end. And so how do you get started? Well, basically it's simple. Go to your bookshelf, grab that dusty book, open the Bible and start reading at the beginning. Pick a simple translation, something that you can understand and where you get the meaning of the Word of God. Write down some questions along the way. Use your pen, note them down and collect them maybe in a notebook. Learn to pray to God. As you grow and read and grow and read, you will get to know God better and more intimate. And he says that we should pray to him such as so many others have. And in this dialogue, we can talk with our God and get to know him better. The next step is tip two, and that is to join a community. Once you've started reading the Bible without any influences from other societies, just try to read it for what it says, because it's God's word. You might want to meet with like-minded believers. Now, this is a difficult journey because there are so many denominations out there and many of them believe different, some slight differences that do make a big impact in the end. But it's important that we meet with others because in Matthew 18 verse 20, it says, where two or three meet in my name, I will be with them. And so in your search, make sure the denomination, the church, the ecclesia, the meeting, whatever you call it, is based on what you read in the Bible and not what they say the Bible says. Let me, let me try and explain that again. When you read your Bible, you need to find someone who agrees or some group that agrees on every point that you have understood from the Bible. And maybe they have a different understanding. Go into the dialogue, see if you, there's a discussion, see if they are open for a debate and see if you have to change or if they have to change. If they're not willing to change, you shouldn't join them. But maybe they're right maybe they can prove their point from the bible and then you have to change so basically find something where you can be happy and you read the bible you have the same understanding of god his son jesus and the power of god which is the holy spirit and what that means for you and how you can apply it is that you have to do your research you have to go through google meet people on the road, maybe search up different terms and find a group that agrees not on the feelings or tradition, but rather on what you believe the Bible says. Find people who hold you accountable, who have morals, who have values, who build you up as a person, that also give you challenges and say, hey, read this passage and see what you think study it and ask God in prayer for understanding and also people who share the love for God and his son Jesus. Now the third tip is something you can do right now today. It says in Romans 1 verse 20 and 21, for ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and the sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and his divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. Yes, they knew God, but they would not worship him as God or even give him thanks. And they began to think up foolish ideas of what God was like. As a result, their minds became dark and confused. And so we shouldn't follow that path of knowing God and then uh, going off on a different road away from him. But rather, let us look around at the creation, at the sky, at the seas, at nature in its beautiful display and see that God exists. And we have no excuse because it's so obvious. There's another aspect that is for me quite amazing and powerful and that is prophecy. I will be found by you and I will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you in from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord. And I will bring you back to the place 
from which I carried you into exile. And if you don't know the history of the Jews, in AD 70, 2000 years ago, they got banished from Jerusalem, from Israel, and scattered into the whole world. And many Jews have remained there for a long time, up until 1948, where the State of Israel was founded and they have a new homeland that they could return to. And this was prophesied not at Jesus' time 2000 years ago, but rather almost a thousand years before Jesus lived. And that is powerful because it states and shows that the prophecy of the past that then came to fulfillment also in Bible times is also valuable for us because that means that not only can we see a prophecy of the past has come true, but rather that we can see that the prophecy that hasn't come to, into effect yet will also come and be established. So basically all the prophecy about the kingdom, about Jesus returning to the earth, all of that will happen again and it's not long off. And we know that it's going to happen because so many prophetic visions have already been fulfilled. And so these two aspects are so powerful for me and maybe also for you, creation and prophecy. And there's so many other things, but they are the ones that when you look around you, you can see that God exists and that they are miracles and miracles still exist today. Now for me, this has really transformed me. I have been changed because I've realized that God has made me He's made me as a perfect human being and I've sadly sinned and stuffed up, but that doesn't mean that it has to stay that way. I can make a change and I can make that change today. I have learned that we can be content. I can be content in every circumstance because the miracle of my body is around and I have the opportunity to be here and also talk to you about this. God's purpose God's meaning, God making you in the first place is reason enough to realize that God wants you. He wants you in his kingdom. And the steps that have to be taken aren't very difficult. We read in the Bible, we understand the meaning, we get baptized, and then we live in this faith until the day that Jesus returns again. We have a guidebook. We have a guidebook in the Bible and this is the guidebook for life. All the situations around us, the war, earthquakes, disasters, floods, they all are put into perspective when you know that this is prophecy being fulfilled and that that means that Jesus is coming closer and closer. It can't be long until he returns. And as you are in the plan from the beginning, from when God existed, or has always existed, but he has planned you as a human being. Jeremiah also was planned. And it says in Jeremiah 1 verse 5, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as prophet for the nation. That means you are in the plan of God. Just as Jeremiah is in the plan, God made you for a purpose. Don't let that just be ignored. Please listen Listen to this message because that means that God really wants you and he wants you in this life as well. I've really changed and the miracles in my life have been manifest in so many different ways. I have a miracle in my wife who is my supporter and at my side at all times. And the journey is up and the journey is down. But we have to carry Jesus cross in the good times and the bad times. Let me close with the words of Ephesians 3 where it says now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever amen and if you want to know what this plan is and how you can be part of God's plan click here otherwise you can click here and there will be a playlist with all the practical discipleship videos that I've created so far. Thank you so much.